We haven't hosted a bourbon dinner since before California issued its stay-at-home order, but this week we'll be inviting three other couples over for dinner via a group video chat platform. I'll be doing all the prep work and my guests will stop by and pick up their food parcels and drop off their bourbon, and then we'll individually prepare the rest of the meal at home. We're starting with an exotic mushroom pate crostini. That's delicious, even if you're not a vegetarian. It has 38 separate steps, so it's not an easy dish to prepare, but I think it's gonna be worth it. For our first course, we're going to have a delicious white bean soup. And for the main course, we'll have chicken breast on papillote with asparagus, bell peppers, and carrots. I selected this particular dish because it'll be wrapped in parchment paper, so my guests just have to put it in the oven on a baking tray and it should come out perfectly. And for dessert, I'm making a lemon curd tart with olive oil. Delicious. It's Friday, the day before the dinner party, and I'm gonna start the advanced preparations today with the bread. And yesterday I made the pate fermenté, which is the first step for this uh, French bread recipe. I hand mixed bread flour, all-purpose flour, salt, and yeast. Into that I stirred three quarters of a cup of room temperature water until a shaggy ball formed. Then I kneaded it with the dough hook of a stand mixer for about six or seven minutes at a medium low speed. Then I oiled a bowl, covered it, put the dough in, and let it rest for about an hour until it doubled in size and I refrigerated it overnight. I'm going to cut it in about eight or 10 pieces and let it warm up for about an hour. So I'm now going to combine that with the rest of the bread ingredients. Flour, yeast, Salt, and if you need these specific measurements, take a look at the website. Three quarters of a cup of water heated to 90 degrees. And we're gonna mix that up. That's what we're looking at right there. So now we're going to knead this in the mixer at medium low speed for about eight minutes. I'm oiling a uh, bowl here and I'm gonna put the bread in there to rest for an hour and 45 minutes. And that's what it looks like after the kneading. I'm going to start the shells now for the lemon curd tart. I've got some uh, almonds, which I'm going to toast in a moment on the, uh, the stove top. And I'm going to be grinding that up with some flour, confectioner sugar, a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna to add to that uh, eggs, olive oil, as well as butter. I've cut the butter up into one half inch cubes and that's chilling in the refrigerator. I'll let those cool for a couple minutes. I'm going to add the flour and confectioner's sugar to the almonds and grind it down to a powder. I'm going to take the, the butter that I cut up into half inch cubes and I'm going to add that and then we're going to pulse it some more until this mixture is grainy with some pea sized chunks in it. Now I'm going to add two egg yolks and seven tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to just pulse it until it's uh, barely incorporated. That looks good. I need to divide this in the parts. The recipe calls for two 9 inch tart shells. I do have one 9 inch tart shell and several 4.5 inch tart shells. there we have the nine inch and I'm going to chill this now for about 30 minutes or so 
and in the meantime I will work on the four and a half inch shells. I've preheated the oven to 425. We're going to bake these for 15 minutes. And I'm going to let them cool for a bit and then I will loosely cover them and leave them at room temperature overnight until tomorrow. And then while those are baking, I'm going to go ahead and zest uh, some lemons and I need two tablespoons of zest and a cup and a half of lemon juice. We'll be chilling both of those until tomorrow. The dough has been rising for about an hour and 45 minutes and it's ready to shape. And we want to degas this as little as possible. So I'm going to cut it into three parts and make uh, batards, which is the initial shape for the baguettes. I'm going to shape this into a rectangle and fold it over itself. And what I'm trying to do here is stretch the outside so that when it rises, it rises up and doesn't just spread out. And I'm going to let these rest for about five minutes. Now I will form them into the shape of baguettes. First we're going to give them another stretch. All right, I'm going to cover these with plastic and I'm going to let them proof for about 45 minutes to an hour and it's ready to bake. I have preheated the oven to 500 degrees and have a uh, pizza stone in there for heat and I've got some water boiling so we can bake by the steam method. And you can check the website uh, and the reference there if you want to learn more about the steam method. Now we're going to turn to the bean soup and we want about half a cup of carrots and half a cup of celery. onion, garlic, and a leek. And some bacon. All 
Alright, I'm going to cover this and I'm going to chill it until tomorrow for the soup. That is done. We'll let that bread cool now and keep it till tomorrow. I'm going to finish up with the white bean soup now. I'm going to chop up one tablespoon of thyme and one teaspoon of rosemary. And the final step for the advanced preparation of the white bean soup is to soak the beans. And these are great northern beans, two cups. You know, Put them in this pot. I'm going to cover them with about two inches of water and then I'm going to let them soak until tomorrow, the day of the dinner. I'm starting the last tasks of the day and these all are part of the chicken papillote. So I've got a pound of asparagus. I'm going to trim the ends off. I have two red peppers. I've cleaned the seeds out of these. I'm going to slice these into thin strips. And finally, I'm going to thinly slice two lemons. The final task for today is to prepare the parchment paper for the pouches for the chicken tapioca. I've sliced uh, or cut out uh, 12 inch pieces, folding it in half lengthwise, and then cut out heart shapes. They're actually functional and they allow me to tightly wrap up the pouches so that they won't fall apart. This actually wasn't the first day of the advanced preparations. I made the mushroom pate yesterday. First I toasted two ounces of whole almonds. Then I boiled three quarters of a cup of chicken stock and I soaked one half ounce of dried porcini mushrooms in the stock. Then I minced two and a half ounces of shallots and one garlic clove, two tablespoons of fresh flat leaf parsley, a teaspoon of fresh thyme. I took the stems off of six ounces of shiitake mushrooms and thinly sliced the caps. Baby bellas, six ounces of those. Then I finally ground the two tablespoons of toasted almonds and in the food processor. I pressed the excess liquid from the porcini mushrooms into a bowl through a medium mesh sieve. I patted those dry, chopped them, and shook them into a large bowl. Then I strained the porcini juice into a small saucepan through a fine mesh sieve lined with a coffee filter. I reduced the stock to about one eighth of a cup, added the stock to the porcini, preheated the oven to 350 degrees, then I heated a tablespoon of butter, I sauteed the minced shallot and garlic clove until it was softened. Then I added one eighth of a cup of dry sherry to the shallot mixture, and I transferred all of that to a Blender. I needed two tablespoons of butter in the skillet, then I sauteed the shiitake and baby bella mushrooms for about two minutes. And meanwhile, I boiled a medium pot of water. I added one half cup of the sauteed mushrooms to the shallot mixture in the blender. I added the remaining sauteed mushrooms to the porcini mixture. I pureed one half cup of cream into the shallot mushroom mixture. Then I added two eggs and ground almonds to the shallot mushroom mixture, and I pureed that until it was very smooth. I stirred the puree into the porcini mixture, and then I stirred the following items into the pate mixture until they were well combined. Parsley, lemon juice, thyme, breadcrumbs, salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I poured the pate mixture into the prepared loaf pan, covered it with foil, and then I nestled that loaf pan into a larger baking pan, submerging the bottom half of the loaf pan with boiling water. I baked the pate in about 50 minutes. I took the loaf pan from the baking pan and cooled it to room temperature, and then I covered and chilled the pate until now. And it is very good. Until tomorrow.